Welcome back to our Shining the Spotlight series, where we shine our light brightly on initiatives that are working to drive positive change in STEM, business, career. And today we are joined by the president of Pro Walk, which is the professional women of color Denmark network. And Ify, we would love for you to please introduce yourself. Thank you for having me today. I'm really, really happy to be here and be a part of this conversation. My name is Ifoma Okwala, as you could hear, and you called me Ify, which is uh, my nickname. Most people call me that. I'm from Nigeria and I have lived in Denmark for the last five years. I have over 15 years in logistics and shipping, having worked in different disciplines. Um, from commercial to operations and project, and I currently lead learning and development function for um, global colleagues. I like to say that's my day job, and I moonlight as the president of ProWalk, um, given that it is a volunteer-run organization. My journey with ProWalk started right at the beginning of that time when I moved to Denmark, so pre-COVID times in 2019. Um, I actually moved to Denmark for work. And when I moved here, I was quite intentional about how I wanted to spend my spare time. So one of the things I desired to do was to be a part of a professional network. And I remember writing this down and I said, women, question mark. And two months later, a colleague of mine actually introduced me and said, hey, are you interested in being a part of this group that is coming together? When I joined a pro walk, I was in the room on the first day before we even had a name. And, you know, I committed to being a part of the journey. And what that meant was that I was one of the founding members and also one of the founding board members. Um, we had our two founders who are our president and vice president. And, uh, you know, as life happens, uh, about a year down the line, uh, our president at the time had to step down. And so we had a transition. So I stepped into the role of uh, vice president. We had done that for about three years. Um, and then the president at the time decided to step down. And for me, it was uh, a no-brainer uh, to continue the work that we're doing and continue building the community um, together with the rest of uh, the board and our committee. And one fun fact is that um, until very recently, so for about four years, um, ProWork has been completely volunteer-run. So all our um, board members and committee members have full-time roles like myself and work with ProWalk uh, in our evenings and, and weekends. So, you know, for a long time, it's just been a, really a labor of love. And what that meant was doing everything. Um, so what did it mean to actually create an organization that would be, you know, professional as our name uh, says, but also embodying what it is that we want to stand for? Um, so as president, I'm leading our board, which is our core working group. Uh, we're responsible for the strategy, the events, and the collaborations that we have. Um, so a big part of that is um, leading and supporting the team, also collaborating with our um, partners, whether it is current or potential, collaborating with you know, some of our supporters and allies who maybe we're not in a formal partnership, but they're always ways to actually explore working together. So a lot of time is spent on that. And, you know, the fun part is also, you know, just getting things done. We have a lot of um, work that we have to do to make sure that our events are up and running. Um, and a lot of it is really, really fun work. Um, but at the same time, it's really um, quite a bit to make sure that our members um, really get the experience that we hope for events, partnerships, all of that fun stuff we are going to be diving into a little bit later on. But going back to the inception of ProWalk, you was, of course, in the room before there was even a name. And collectively, what were some of those issues, some of those challenges that really led you to creating this community? I'll start from the two key reasons, one each from our founders. So one is um, from Dominica, and she came to, to Denmark to study and eventually settled down here. Uh, and the other is Kenyan American, who also came here and settled down and has, you know, kind of a, a family that is from different cultures and backgrounds. Both of them are married to Danes. And raising children in this environment and seeing the representation of people of color in the media, in mainstream media, was kind of like a trigger. And actually one event as Salem uh, it described it was, 
you know, reaching out to a television network after watching a program that didn't necessarily represent people of color in the best light. And she said, what other stories do you have to tell, right? Can, is there any way I can support you uh, who are doing that? And the response that she received was, we're very happy with our content. These are the stories that we want to tell. And, you know, it was one of those things where you, you vent and you go back into a corner and just keep on uh, laying things be as they are, or you do something about it. So it actually led her to start a conversation with um, Phaedra, who also has a passion and her reason was also having a child of Dominican and Danish descent and wanting him to have positive role models, right? So of course he had his parents that he could look up to and see that both parents are contributing to society, have thriving careers. But beyond that, what are the stories and who are the role models? So when you brought these two very, very heartfelt um, reasons together, there was a desire um, to actually bring a group together and find ways to tell more positive stories about people of color. And this is one of the fundamental reasons why ProWalk was created. But I think in that discussion and, you know, starting to think about what could this be and why does this need to exist? Some other things emerged as well. And one of them was the lack of community. So the lack of a space where people that have a similar heritage, similar stories, similar challenges could come together and, you know, just yield off of that community. And so um, ProWalk was created first and foremost to actually create that community and space for women of color to come together and connect and grow and evolve and impact the society around us. So it was coming from, even though maybe some negative um, catalyst, but it was really coming together and deciding to take a positive focus and decide to work together in a more positive way. To take that adversity and that negativity and to flip the lens, to turn it into something positive, to let that fuel your motivation is so, so powerful. And look where you're at now. It's this powerful support system. There's this ongoing sense of community because role modeling is so important. You know, you can't be what you can't see, particularly for our younger generation as well. And looking through the lens of ProWalk, so thinking about those challenges and what you want to achieve, what are your focus areas? What are you really offering to your members and community? First and foremost is bringing that community together. Uh, as our name says, we're a network, right? And so we bring that network together. We create opportunities for our um, community to connect with each other, right? Um, relationships um, are very important. Uh, being able to connect and share stories in a safe space is very important for that growth. Um, sometimes realizing that, okay, I'm not alone. Being able to share solutions, resources, and things like this really help people to thrive in this space. So that's number one. So we do this through events. So we have networking events. We also bring together impactful events that people can have that forum to connect and um, interact with each other in a safe space. And a lot of times people talk about the female um, that they have when they come for a pro work event. And that's one of the things that makes me very proud and very happy because it's not something that we articulate, but you feel it every single time that you're in the room. It's a safe space. It's inspiring. It gives you great energy to go forward and continue to do things in your own space. So that's number one. Number two is we leverage these opportunities where we come together for events and we build um, career and personal development programming. So some of that is in form of our events. Some of that we have some programs. Uh, we have things like a mentoring program, a coaching program, and we're progressively listening to the voice of our members to think about what are the things that will be important, topics or tools that we can bring together for our members. So we're constantly iterating and listening to the voice of our, our community to develop programming um, to support our members. So we do this through masterclasses, through programs, different series and collaborations um, to also make sure that we're widening the net and bringing people in connection with programs or initiatives that would um, help them to thrive, whether it's personally or in their career. 
So that's a very big part of what we do. The third piece is really about the positive images of people of color. We, of course, we focus on women of color, um, but essentially how we do that is making sure that we're telling the stories of our members. We're telling the stories of people in our community. And we do that in different ways. We're very, very active in social media. We use um, the web as well and also leveraging our events. So we actually have a program called um, Pro Celebrates where we spotlight a women of color and their different academic or career achievements and contributions uh, to society. And what I love is that it's really varied. Um, so, you know, we have scientists, we have creatives, we have entrepreneurs, we have people in corporate careers, we have, a, you know, so it's, it's really very, so the opportunity to tell these stories and share people's different backgrounds um, is one of the things that we, we intentionally do. It is part of uh, the purpose for why we're created. And I would say in the last um, two years, um, out of that, something that has emerged and is very critical uh, for us is collaborating and being a part of the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging discourse in Denmark. So we're intentional about uh, being out there, connecting with like-minded organizations. We work together with corporate organizations and um, supporting them with their policies, with their, um, so their internal policies, with the internal initiatives around DEIB. So we're actively engaging beyond our community to really, really bring to life our vision to impact society around us. Um, so that is really the, the pillars, I would say, of um, ProWork and uh, how we bring our mission to life. There's really a theme around this. It's creating that safe space for sharing, discovery and inspiration. So becoming a member at ProWork, what does that process look like? What can you expect? So becoming a member is very easy. And I think there's an opportunity here to actually say who can become a member of ProWalk. Um, our name says women of color. And sometimes people are like, okay, so does that include me or does that exclude me? And so our philosophy is that we welcome anyone who aligns with the vision and mission of ProWalk. So if you see ProWalk as a place for you, if it's a place that you would like to connect, um, grow and evolve, you are welcome. That's irrespective of your race, irrespective of your country of origin, whatever the case. Um, so we welcome everyone to be a part of ProWalk. That is number one. And then number two, it's very simple. It's a three-step process. Our website is easy. It's ProWalk.org. And you can go onto our website. Um, you click on a button and you decide if you want to be annual member or if you want to be a semi-annual member. And it's very easy. It's a three-step process. And you just sign up. Um, share your information, um, make a payment, and, you know, then you automatically become a member of ProWalk. In the early days, it was a bit more rigorous, and we reflected on that and realized that we, we don't want to have any barriers to people joining our network. I always encourage people, you know, if you have any question marks, if it's not a no-brainer for you, the first thing you should do is come to one of our events join us, come, you know, we open um, all our events to members and non-members um, for the most part. I think most of our events are open to all and you can come for an event, see what the experience is. And, you know, for I think usually um, by then it's a no-brainer for people. But essentially as a member, when you join us in ProWalk, you have access to a community. And this community, we enable for social connections. So we have a forum um, where members are able to connect and share experiences informally. And then we have our events that are curated by our ProWork team and organized by our ProWork team. So you have a range of career, personal development programs, and networking events. So you have an opportunity to take advantage of these events uh, throughout the year. And we have the opportunity to join our programs. So for some of our programs, they're open to ProWalk members only. So as an example, our mentoring program, um, that is um, for members only. If you want to be a mentee, we allow uh, mentors to be from every industry. And, you know, it's not limited to, to ProWalk members to ensure that we have a big pool 
of mentors. The same um, with our coaching program. It is open to members and non-members, but then our members have a preferential rate for the coaching services. So this is kind of how we ensure that everything that we offer is open and available. But then, of course, our members have a preferential um, kind of access. So they have access to a wealth of opportunities and I really love that you invite everybody into this journey. It's super important. I'll be sure to put all the links in the description box below. So everybody go check out the wonderful things that ProWalk are doing and what they can offer you. Another way of supporting is, of course, by sponsoring. What does that look like? To be a sponsor with ProWalk, the first thing that we do is that we have an engagement uh, with interested parties. You could just write to us on ProWalk board at ProWalk.org. Um, so you just send an email to us to express your interest. We have some set packages for a specific uh, sponsorship amount. We offer certain access to membership for your employees um, or a small group of people. We offer access to some of our key events in the course of the year. We offer uh, an opportunity for speaking engagement and we do some personalized events. Um, for sponsors. And for some of our sponsors, they have um, special needs where they would like to work together with us. Uh, and those things we actually um, discuss separately. Um, you are also very welcome to just share what it is that you would like to support us with, whether that is financial, whether that is in form of you know products or services. As I mentioned, our organization is mainly um, volunteer run. So some of the partnerships help us to support um, these volunteers. So we would have a discussion about what exactly it is that we can partner with. And it's very easy. We just set up a conversation with one of our team members and we take it from there. So there are two opportunities. One is you can just directly um, uh, sponsor or um, we can look at a personalized package where there's an exchange of value. It sounds like a really meaningful collaboration and partnership that you offer. And events-wise, what do you have coming up that you are really excited about? So this year, ProWalk turns five. So it is really, really exciting. It's a, it's a huge milestone for us. So in the course of the year, we're going to have some landmark events. Um, so we're going to have a celebration that is coming up towards at the end of March. And going ahead, then we are launching new personal development programs. This is something that we're very excited about. So for us, it's important that we have a balance between, you know, your career development and developing the mind and, you know, the, the, the what part, but also developing the person holistically. So we have some great personal development uh, programming coming up. Um, we're relaunching our mentoring program. We are relaunching our coaching program. So giving us the opportunity to scale and kind of support on demand um, because we've got a lot of uh, queries and requests uh, in between our mentorship cohorts. So we're very excited to actually now be able to serve people on demand. Uh, so that is very exciting. And we have some special celebrations throughout the year uh, and landmark events. How exciting. So are you going to be promoting that on your website, socials? Is there somewhere that people can keep updated on the announcements? Yes, they can. So we are on all social media platforms. On LinkedIn, uh, it's ProWalk, so Professional Women of Color. Uh, we have a group there. We have a page there. You can follow us and all our programs are always uh, on there. On Facebook, it's um, ProWalk as well. And on Instagram, it is proward.dk. And you can find all our events um, and our calendar. And of course, on our website, um, you can also subscribe to get our newsletter so you're kept up to date uh, with our exciting events. Perfect. Well, a very happy fifth birthday to ProWalk. I am celebrating all of the incredible achievements that you have made over the past five years. And thinking about that reoccurring feedback you've had from members, the challenges that you've seen so many face within those five years, what would you say are your three non-negotiables that companies should really embrace when it comes to increasing diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging in Denmark? Fantastic question. Three non-negotiables. I think number one is 
to really and truly embody and embrace all people in Denmark, right? So a lot of our members, the feedback that we get from them, especially the ones who come into Denmark and are looking to um, settle in and transition into the workforce is that they meet a lot of resistance. So I think having an open uh, mind and policies and practices when it comes to hiring, that is truly inclusive, right? I think when you, you think about from an organization perspective, you want to attract, you want to retain, and you want to grow your employees, right? And in Denmark, there's a challenge when it comes to attracting and retaining international talent. So starting from the recruitment process, right? So having inclusive um, practices will allow you to be able to get the full benefit of a diverse workforce, right? So for me, it starts from there. That is number one. So having truly inclusive um, recruitment practices. And when you do have employees who join your organization who may have um, a different background, then really and truly having an environment that allows people to be authentic. So, you know, having um, psychological safety, engaging your employees to really open up for other cultures. There should be no fear around having people who have different backgrounds or different uh, cultures, but really a curiosity. And I think this is one of the areas where it needs to be role modeled from top down, right? It needs to become an organization culture. So for me, without this, then DEIB will remain an acronym. It will remain a separate practice, but it needs to be embedded in the culture of organizations and recognizing that the world is a lot more globalized. People will continue to move around and for you to get the benefit of having diverse employees, international employees in your workforce, then you need to make it an environment where they can thrive. And I would say my, my third one would be to be bold. It would be to be bold enough to have conversations. Uh, it would be bold enough um, to look beyond um, the rhetoric and actually say what exactly is happening out there, right? What is the true state of my organization, right? If you're not having dialogues around DIB, if you are not looking at this really and truly, then you will remain um, the same, right? And the world is evolving really fast. So it's really a loss of opportunity if organizations are not stepping out of their own box of how they operate to understand what is happening out there. What should they be learning? What should they be adapting when it comes to having a more diverse workforce? So for me, really going beyond their four walls and engaging, we have a, an annual conference. Uh, we have International Women's Day every year where we talk about topics that impact women and women of color. And we invite companies to come into that space to, to listen and learn and exchange ideas, right? So these are opportunities that we hope that people will take on board in order to improve how they operate and how inclusive they are. Super, super impactful factors. And just on inclusive hiring policies, what are some examples that you have seen work really well? So some of the things that I've seen that work really well is when companies are looking at the language that they're using in their job ads, when they're reviewing the qualifications or the requirements that they have, right? I've seen this in, in practice where, you know, you have this now some AI and software that you could use to actually look at your job ads, right? And make them more inclusive, right? So whether this is capturing a more balanced gender audience, right? whether it is capturing people with relevant skills who normally would be excluded because of the way that the requirements are framed, then you have an opportunity when you address some of these things, you attract a wider a group. And, you know, often with recruitment, there's a time and a cost element. So you're thinking about narrowing down to be able to identify the right candidates. But by addressing these things, you're not widening um, where you, you lose out or you spend more time, you actually just bring in more interesting and qualified um, candidates um, that you can then consider. And typically when you have this in um, 
then the next step is looking at how do you conduct the next uh, step of your recruitment process, right? Do you have diverse interviewers? Do you ensure that you have more than one person who is doing the hiring to make sure that the blind spots are highlighted, right? And you have a balanced view or perspective to your candidates. What are some of the ways that you can challenge each other positively um, so that you're able to, you know, have a balanced view of those that you potentially would be hiring into your organization? And down the line, when you do hire employees, then ensuring that your onboarding practices and your your policies are inclusive so people can immediately come in and be able to operate at their best possible right so those are some of the things that i have seen thanks so much for sharing ify it's really about reinforcing and speaking about these changes that we need to implement and speaking of change what change do you want to see in the industry i would love to see um, an industry where people do not have a fear or barriers to being a part of the workforce. Um, I believe that ProWalk's existence um, stems from a need that I would like to see disappear. I would like to see that people um, can come into Denmark and really have a feeling of being included and not needing to have, you know, this separate group in order to energize and go into the workforce. So I really believe that having a more inclusive society and environment and workforce will just give us the opportunity to feel more included. And typically when you feel like you can be yourself, when you feel connected, there there is... Um, a different way of life. There is a different energy that you bring. You're able to thrive. And for me, that is something that I would like to see change. I still hear too many stories. Um, there's still too much that is stacked against whether it's gender or ethnicity and keeping people marginalized. So fundamentally, it's, it's a big ask, but I really want to see that shift. Denmark is um, quoted as one of the top countries to live in and different indices, quality of life um, being one of the top ones. And I would love Denmark to be in the top for inclusive countries that welcomes foreigners. And that I would love to see. So it's beyond the industry for me. It's, it's really societal. And that is something that I would really love to see. And it would permeate into the corporate environment. Maybe it's too idealistic, but yeah, that's a, that's what I hope to see. And uh, I believe that, you know, by continually working towards it and engaging, we might make small dents. It's a long road, but it's worth it. Totally. It's little and often continually doing all of these things, putting in that effort for the changes to then happen for you to reach that end goal that you have in mind. And you're right. When you feel like you belong, studies show you're six times more likely to be engaged. And that then has a domino effect on everything in your life, not just career, so it's really, really important. Ify, it's been an absolute pleasure to shine the light on the great things you're doing at ProWalk and to hearing more about your own journey. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Ellie.